take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever the time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Divine Father, we are grateful for what we are hearing. The testimonies you are causing us to hear, so we may be strengthened for this work. And to cause others to know that you are with us. Thank you, Father, for that. Divine, speak to us in the message you have before us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, when I was in, we were in Cameroon, just uh, as I said, we came back from Cameroon on Tuesday uh, this week. It was a good time there. I began to hear testimonies there in Cameroon what the Lord has used this ministry to do for them. People came out to testify. I listened to Sister Linda's message. I got saved. I listened to Pastor Rica's message or messages. That's my delight. Wonderful. It gives joy to me. I, when I listened to such testimonies, I said, the suffering, the little suffering I have passed through is worth it. Whatever is the accusation of man, the voice of God is higher. When John, in prison, sent to inquire after Jesus, because he was hearing mixed voice, some people said Jesus had a devil. Some said Jesus was a sinner because... He was breaking the law of God. What law of God? He was healing people on the Sabbath day. And so on. Maybe as Jesus took a whip and cleared out sinners from the temple, they would have reported it also to John the Baptist in prison and said, that man that you are talking about, you didn't don't know him. Go and see him what he was doing in the temple. How you were, people were running, gr 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 gr, it's a lion that had come. Yes, that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came for sin and is judging sin. But the report will come in different ways. So John became so confused, discouraged. The man I announced to the world that he is the savior. 
They are telling me something different about him. They are telling me he is a sinner. Which means I announced a sinner to the world. So, go and find of him. He sent his disciples to go and verify. That's what people don't know. You receive a bad report concerning a good man. And you have no time of verification. You go straight to believe the bad report. And you count that it is so. You will miss the Messiah by that. You will miss eternal life by that. You will miss the way. You will miss the truth. Because there is no other way. Jesus is the Christ that the Lord sent. So there is a way the Lord has sent for you. There's a messenger the Lord has sent for you. But mixed reports are coming about them, about it. Go and verify. Do your personal verification. As John the Baptist, restricted in one place, but he had disciples to send to verify. Are you restricted? In one place that you cannot go around and check up to know this is the evil re this report, this evil report about this holiness revival movement about the international director of holiness revival movement about maybe the wife of of the international director of holiness revival movement this evil report at this so john is wise to do that and that is where the spirit of righteousness is it will want you to know the truth because it's the truth that shall make you free so John sent disciples to go and find out these things. They all came to Jesus and said, John sent us to find out, are you he that is to come? Or should we look for another? Are you the Messiah actually? Are you the anointed of God? Are you the one the Lord has least sent to save Israel? To give life to people as we thought. Or maybe you are not. Should we yet look for another? What did Jesus say? Go and tell John. Look at it in the book of um, Matthew. Chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I read from verse 1. The Bible tells us here. Saying. Matthew 11 from verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do, which ye do here and see. What are those things? Verse 5. One, two, go. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the dead they have, they have here the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached unto them go and tell john go and tell those people like choosing holiness movement these things you're hearing these testimonies you are hearing go and tell them and then in verse six can we read verse six together one two go and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Why are you finding fault? Why are you pointing an accusation finger? Why are you calling evil good? Why are you condemning the just? Is that not sin? Can you do that and say you are doing it by the Holy Spirit? And that you are just and you are right? That you have zeal for Jesus, condemning Jesus in another. Uh -uh. His disciples told him, We saw two casting out devils and we forbade them. Is that the spirit of Christ? Why are you forbidding other people doing the same work? Bringing people to righteousness, bringing people to holiness. Why do you forbid them? 
What did Jesus say unto them? Forbid them not. They that do such things will never speak against us. They that, are, they that do such things are with us. They are not against us. That's Jesus talking. He has more people than your group. He has other people you cannot control. They are not in your group. Holiness revival movement should not think it is the only group now. The Lord is also doing so through other people. We may know them, we may not know them. Let's be humble and allow Jesus do his work. So that we don't condemn the just. We don't give room to Satan to blaspheme the name of the Lord. He will judge you. God is not a respecter of persons. That's what we know. But then, there are some true men that know that God has raised up this movement. There are some people, they are original. They are sober. They are humble. They know it. Look at, the, look at their type in the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2. John chapter 3. Verse 1 and verse 2. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Is that all clear? Without the presence of God, people will be changing. Without the justification, justification of God, people will just be changing worldwide. Things will be turning around. People are rejoicing of their names in the book of life. Without the presence of God, righteous and humble people. I mean, humble people. They may not even be righteous. Humble, but some truth and sincere ones. Humble people know Humble people, they know this is the finger of God. God is here. This work is going on by God. This work is God that is doing it. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him that's something you need to understand no man can do these miracles except god be with him why don't you have this simple understanding are you seeing this type of great revival going on anywhere and then you say god is not there then who's doing it and if god is there we're condemning it we're speaking evil against it why joining the wrong company to judge it, to condemn it? Uh-uh. You want bush to surround you? Any man who is in a place wants another person to come so that the, the, the place can look like a town. Is that not so? Let the place look like a town. Why should I be surrounded by bush? You, are you doing the work of Christ? You are serving people. Don't you want more people to join in this business? To save more people are two not better than one look at it in the book of john chapter 9 john chapter 9 we want to read verse 1 and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his belt then in verse 6 when he had thus spoken he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him go wash in the pool of psyllium go and wash in the pool of psyllium which is by interpretation sent he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged and some say this is he others say he is like him 
but he said I am he what a sign what a wonder a man born blind opened his eyes to see I don't know what's wrong with some human beings this person never had the privilege to see he never had the privilege with all his presence in Israel with all the administration of the Pharisees he never had the privilege to see even in the uh, and all that and the grace of seeing came now in verse 8 the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged can you see this the state of this man is he not a human being as you circumstance affected him and he became a beggar he sat and begged is that a good profession a beggar having a good profession no is it not he that sat and begged some said this is he others said he he is like him and he said i am he therefore said they unto him how were your i how were then how were thine eyes open he answered and said a man that is called jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Siloam and wash and i went and washed and i received my sight see how the miracle happened the testimony was so clear the name of the man came out so clear unfortunately that was not a good name it was not a good name a name of contradiction before the pharisees a name of contradiction a name that has been abused among the jews a name that traits have been attached to have nothing to do with that name we will deal with you if we see that you have anything to do with that name and that is jesus that is the name given among men whereby men shall be saved now you can see so he, the man's name is jesus says you go and watch and at this one i received my sight then said they unto him where is he he said i know not they they brought to the pharisees him that aforetime was blind and it was the sabbath day when jesus made the clay and opened his eyes you see the group of people instead of rejoicing as members that have known jesus as people that have come to see the glory of jesus they wanted jesus to be persecuted that's why they brought this man to the pharisees headquarters of persecution my pastor that person we are fighting against is doing something now they have said he has done something they, they said he is here they say they are saying he's having a program in this place that person these are people that are not looking for jesus they're not looking for salvation they are not seeking eternal life their hearts are not humble instead of rejoicing of the glory of jesus and seeking their own they want to quench the fire that's what people are doing they have been trained members of the church have been trained to fight they have been trained to resist that which is good they have been trained to quench the fire they have been trained to resist the truth of christ to resist the ways of god so that when they discover war they carry it for oppression we will fight it we will fight it that's what they have been trained to do so look at it now they brought the man to the pharisees do you know the, are you going to consider what is considered to be the offense see the offense of this man verse 14 and it was the sabbath day when jesus made the clay and opened his eyes everybody i want you to read the offense and know the offense of this jesus the reason why they were fighting jesus day and night the reason why they were fighting jesus every day the reason why they accused him that he is a sinner look at it let's read verse 14 together one two go and it was the sabbath day when jesus met the clay and opened his eyes get not that scripture i want you to be delivered 
Because Satan is using denominations. Even those that claim to be righteous and holy. Satan is using everything to fight the cause of Christ. Take note of that scripture. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. They remember one of them had said, Nicodemus had said, a member of the Pharisees had said, Yea, are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except what God be with him. Otherwise, how can just somebody mix clay and put on the eye and say, Go and wash, and they will see? How many have done so before? It's the power of God. This is not fearing God. You are not fearing God. People's life are being changed. Men and women are being changed. Children and youths are being changed. You're not seeing the power of God in it. You're not seeing the, the working of the Holy Ghost in it. He makes he made clay. Made clay. How much clay can cover the eyes? He made clay. How much of the clay can cover the eyes of a man? Can be rubbed in the eyes of the man? Now, that's what the man told them. He made clay. Therefore, verse 16, Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. That's the sin. When they are telling you, Hey, that man is, a, is a not of God. Go and find out the reason why they are saying he's not of God. That man is rejected by the church. That man is rejected. That man is pushed away from the church. Go and find out. Go and do your investigation. What is it that the man is put away? What is it that the man is being judged and rejected? He walks on the Sabbath day. <laughs> Who created the Sabbath day? All things were made by him and for him. He met the Sabbath day. What, okay, what did he do? He breaks the law. He doesn't keep the law. Which law? He makes clay on the Sabbath day. Go and check your Bible, whether it's inside. The laws of God. Go and check the laws. God, that pure law God gave you. Go and check through your laws whether there is any statement there. No man shall make clay on the Sabbath day. Can you they left God. A demon spirit took over that business. That somebody makes something. Oh, you don't take drugs on Sabbath day, however, however the matter is, however sick. You don't take drugs. Is this tradition? Your traditions are your problem. Your traditions are your problem. Full well, ye have left the word of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Mixing clay on the Sabbath day. How much quantity? Is it enough to make one, one brick? How much quantity? Make, okay, mixing it to do what with it? To heal someone. You're not interested in a man to be healed? If you were the blind man and you had all the privilege to be healed on the Sabbath day, will you say you are too righteous? Please don't bother about healing me today, Sabbath day. Will you have said so? What type of spirit is in man? What type of spirit is in man? He is a sinner. Because he walked on the Sabbath day, he walked. He healed. He did a good thing which is according, contrary to the law. Contrary to the principle of our church. Is the principle of your church Bible? Is the principle of your church. The laws and bylaws of your denominational church. Is a day Bible. A day scripture. Can you go to any portion of scripture and bring it out from there and say, this is what the scripture says. 
and it agrees with the, the laws and bylaws of your church you want people to live the word of God to live the guidance of the Holy Spirit to live the divine assignment God has given to them to obey your laws That's, do you want it so to obey your own laws so is then your law is higher than God's law because we leave the lower to obey the higher is that so when you have two commanders one is junior one is senior the junior gives his own command and the senior gives his own command whose do you obey the higher overshadows the junior when the stars are shining giving you light and the sun appears what happens to the stars they disappear all human laws disappear when God takes over be informed if the Lord tells you to do a thing all those bylaws of your pastor must be put aside because we know in part and we prophesy in part and when that which is perfect comes that which is in part vanishes we should know scripture we should understand scripture you don't know scripture and being tossed to and fro as children understand the scripture now listen to these people they say unto the blind man may verse 16 therefore some of the pharisees therefore said some of the pharisees this man is not of god because he keepeth not the sabbath day others said how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles and there was a division among them amen, amen. now there are divisions there are those that accuse there are those that praise god which one do you belong the choice is yours which one of these groups of two do you belong the matter is you some say he is john the baptist some say he is one of the prophets but what do you say we want you tell us where do you belong why are you doubting why are you still doubting with all these things you're seeing because somebody else is murmuring you see that man is a great man ah, that, ah, ah. you want to belong to man which group do you belong you have your senses of judgment church brother sister you will be judged according to the light god has given you you will not be judged by the conviction of another person you will not be judged by the position of another person but by the light god has given to you take the decision that you'll be judged. you may die before some of these church elders you will go for judgment before them and they may repent after you they may repent after you oh we didn't know but you have gone to hell and god you know how merciful he is he will forgive them he will forgive them but you have been damned you have believed a lie you have followed a false group false opinion you die and damn that's what you need to understand save yourself so they were divided here verse 17 they say unto the blind man again what sayest thou of him that he had opened thine eyes he said he is a prophet everybody said join the blind man please join the blind man's group say it again I say you should join the blind man's group. Why are you still keeping quiet? I say say it again. Jesus. Was the blind man correct? Yes. How long did he know this thing? That day. He has evidence in his life. He must not testify against himself. He must not testify against the truth. Why are you so fearful that you cannot give testimony to the truth? Who in this life do you fear? Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, 
we will not be careful we will not be fearful to answer you according to this manner you are not right we know you are not right neither are we going to be in your side why are you blind man came to this truth in one day stood before the pharisees and the sanhedrin the highest authority and declared who jesus is you have known this thing for all these years you are afraid and the fear for the abomination and the homemongers and all liars shall have their part in the lake that bonnet with sulfur you will go and ask god who is higher himself or the pharisees you're going to go i mean god will ask you who is higher himself or the pharisees that you cannot testify of him see this good work see this good testimonies good revelations that god is spreading around the world saving the world and some pharisees somewhere you are afraid to declare that jesus is the one behind it you are afraid before pharisees to declare i know this i stand for it the bible said the people of nineveh shall rise up and condemn thee in the judgment the blind man shall rise up and condemn you before god for your fear for your compromise for the mouth that is sealed that can never testify for jesus that cannot have the you have the true documents you have the true book you have had the true preacher yet you cannot testify you fear people fear churches fear man of god fear what Hmm. look at it here what is your opinion he is a prophet but the jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight i will they believe they don't have grace to believe you think god wastes his own wastes his own grace don't give that which is holy to dogs because they will rent it and turn back again i mean they will trample it on their feet and turn back again and attack you god gives grace to the humble humble yourself also before god then he will give you grace god resisted the proud proud and give it grace to the humble god didn't give them grace to believe they are too proud to believe self-righteous to believe too self-righteous and so god allowed them you will pray hey god show my pastor don't pray that type of prayer again show your pastor who doesn't want to humble himself is god is god after man is the gospel after man humble yourself you will know the truth be up there it will evade you for thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto birds even so it so it pleased you lord he is god nobody should question him question his works humble now okay go and call the father let's know how you have trained him bad training given to people let's see how you train the father so they called the man the father of the, the parents of the man that was born blind and had received his sight and in verse 19 and they asked him saying is this your son who ye say was born blind how then doth he now see let me know the training you gave this man and his wife they're members of your church let's see the training some of these people are getting from church they are members of their church pharisees church see their answer his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind 50 percent everybody say everybody say let's continue verse 21 but by what means he now see it we know not oh who had opened his eyes we know not he is of age 
ask him he shall speak for himself wonderful <laughs> the, the sin they committed is another 50 percent a perfect lie was told by who opened his eyes i do not know how the eyes open i do not know parents a man born blind doesn't get far from his house how will he get far and he his eyes open who will be the first person to hear the information <laughs> the first people to hear the information even if you are in the farm there are people that will sacrifice their work and be running to farm to go and tell you people were there but see it now we know not then you are now going to see you are now going to see sinful intelligence what is it He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. They are sin. They are intelligent and slippery. They are intelligent and slippery. But what happened that these people were not grateful? With all these things the Lord did for you, you are not grateful. You are, you are not thankful. This is your child that was born blind. Who takes him to toilet? Who shows him? Who takes him to bathroom? And shows him how to bath? Have you not been suffering every day? And now, divine help came upon you in one day. Who puts on cloth upon him? Help came. And you're not thankful. God did it for you. You are afraid of man and will not give glory to God. So afraid with this which the Lord did to change your life. So afraid. You came across these messages, these tapes, these books, the, all the materials that changed your life. And you saw a, a, one of your pastors coming into your room. You're hiding it. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, what were you listening when I came? Uh, uh, yes, you know, there's uh, you know, one of the messages of our pastor that uh, I... Uh, hey. Why are you like that? Why are you like that? Why are you so affected? That God is lost. God becomes too small in your eyes. The vision of God is lost. The vision of man now. Let's go. Now. I want us to read. Verse 22. To 23 together. You will now know that they have been members of Pharisee. The, churches, the church of Pharisee. You get it now and they have been trained like that verse 22 one two go these words spake his parents because they feared the jews for the jews have agreed already that if any man did confess that he was christ he should be put out of the synagogue verse 23 therefore said his parents he is of age ask him they were well trained dedicated members of the jewish church jewish temple is there eternal life in that type of life that's the problem that's the problem that teaches you how to fight God. That teaches you how to deny God. He that denies me before men in the earth. Him will I deny before my father and his angels. Perfect. Eternal life has gone. Eternal life has gone. 
denied before me, denied before God. You deny Jesus before men. You will not give him his glory. You have been denied before God. He will say unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that do iniquity, fearing men above God. Depart. Get me out here. Get him out from me. Fearing men above God. So that's it. Be careful of the training you're receiving. Be careful of the, of the. We went to Cameroon. As I told you, we just came from Cameroon. In one of these cities, announcement had been passed to the church members of a particular denomination. If anyone attends that their program, we shall excommunicate him from the church. Is the synagogue. Synagogue has replaced heaven. Synagogue has become too precious. Where have you been so deceived by the name of your denomination that you have replaced heaven with it? Where have you been deceived, so deceived by sitting among the members of your denomination that you have re replaced heaven? sitting among the saints and angels of heaven with it why have you some been so deceived they will drive you out of synagogue which synagogue what did they used to do in the synagogue how long will it last uh, you who go to jerusalem i don't know what they're here did you see the synagogue did they lead you to show you where the synagogue is Every, the fire shall burn every man's walk. The earth shall be caught up in fire. The elements shall be burnt with fire. Everything shall be wiped out. Is it these things that will be wiped out? These things that are subject to decay that you are so protecting. The glory now is no more the glory of Christ. It's the glory of being a member of a church. What a deceit. What a blindness. That's the beauty meant. Jesus is the original. That's byproduct. Why are you so fascinated at the byproduct? That the main product, you are not going for it. Jesus is the main person. Can church do you anything without Christ? Can the preaching of any man save you without Jesus? Can the teaching of any man transform you without Jesus? It's Jesus that transforms. And so faith must be on him. It's not, oh, preach all you can preach. If faith is not on Christ, there shall be no salvation. There shall be no salvation. Do all the prayer. If your faith is not in Christ, there shall be no healing. So what is, what's your problem? That you're so lost by the power and control of man to the point that you are being misled from Jesus. Your senses are benumbed. So, you now see, let's go further. Let's go further. Verse 24. Then again, called they, the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the glory. Let's stop there. It seems these people are improving now. Are you not seeing them improving? At least they have recognized that this work is from God. Give God the glory. Everybody say it. You know, they are also very wise and very, they are wise too because if they keep on refusing this, the members will stun them with stones. The Jews, they, they don't play with them all. They knew that if they continue to reject this, that this special thing is not from God, people will get provoked and deal with them. So they came down and reduced the sin, divided the matter into two. Yes! 
God is doing that thing and they will give you doctrine why give you scriptures you know it's not everybody that uh, prophesies that it's of God it's not everybody that heals that it's of God it's not every although God can allow it God has allowed that thing to go ahead so thank God give him the glory but then they are still holding to their opposition they divided the works from the person give God the glory we the praise we know that this man is a sinner as for that position we will not change from it as for the works God has his own way of doing his works but for the man is a sinner it was a man they had been seeking for it was a man and that man that grip they have laid on that man they will not want to release that grip they will not want to release that grip then verse 26 verse uh verse 25 he answered and said whether he be a sinner or no i know not one thing i know that whereas i was blind now i see clap on for this goodly man <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah remember you belong to this group uh, do you belong to the blind man's uh, recovered group? Yes. The man that was recovered from his side. Number one, he said Jesus was who? Was a prophet. Number two, where is he following Jesus? And they say Jesus is a sinner. But where is he following Jesus? It's not by your own opinion, Pharisees. It's by what God did in my life. Is you calling him sinner? But as for me, he's a prophet. Is you saying the man, I should give God glory for my eyes that opened. But that the man is a sinner. Please, I don't want to go into details in this your church politics. That's what the man is saying. Leave me out from this church politics. Is church politics so? Leave me out from this your church politics. Me, I have found a man that changed me. I'm following him. Simple. Hi, that position disturbed the Pharisees. That position, they wanted to overcome this man, make the man to remain in the synagogue, but the man is uh, getting tougher than them. Ah, uh -uh. where? Come. Who are you? They became agitated. Verse 26. Then said they to him again. This conviction that is so deep in your heart. What did he do to thee? How opened he thine eyes? Do you know that those people have been tortured to themselves? They have been tortured. You hold a piece of charcoal that has fire. And you say, I will not throw it away. Your hands will burn. They have been tortured. Leave that matter and let the thing, let God's work continue. You say, no, I won't leave it. Your, your hands are burning. They are restless. Then, the blind man too. Now, do you know something? For the blind man to be doing what he is doing now is because he all through his life he didn't know who is who. Are you aware of that? He didn't know Pharisee 1 and Pharisee 2. He didn't know Pharisee captain, Pharisee chairman. He didn't know any, he, can, he, he didn't know anybody. He just, he, did, he see one of them for the first time and they're all one. He didn't know who is the chairman. <laughs> so when chairman is speaking, he's not like, like anybody else uh, talking. When you are dealing with matters of God, 
that you are standing for God don't have respect of persons. Let no titles touch you. You are dealing with man. Let every man bow before Jesus. So, now hear him now. Verse 27. He answered them, I have told you already. And ye did not hear. <laughs> Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? As for me, I'm already a disciple. You know, there's some of you that cannot take your pastor to logical conclusion on matters of righteousness. It's too hard. That, that, the scripture that commands you, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, has nothing to do with matters that concerns God. When that person is resisting the ways of God, has nothing to do with that. We're not careful to answer you after this manner. Why not take your pastor to logical conclusion? Can you give reasons? Like in that Cameroon, in Baminda, Cameroon, last Saturday, I had the story. When that church went from their meeting in combined service or workers' meeting or whatever meeting, meeting leadership meeting or, or what, the church was divided into two. Pastor, a woman came from America with ungodly hairdo got ungodly appearance Worldly, for a program in our city we were involved in publicizing for that woman we went about sharing her handbills these people came here whose dressing and lifestyle is like our own they are our brethren and your placing is communication on whoever will go there what do you mean why are you not taking your pastors to logical conclusion why are you not asking questions even jesus they ask him questions is it your pastor that should not answer is that the type of respect the lord says you should give unto the date of yourself unto the date of the pastor until he goes to answer eternal questions you can ask wow i want to be clear you are an individual and there's freedom of worship there's freedom of belief there's freedom of opinion before i take your opinion give me answers to this why are you not why are you so fearful why are you so fearful <laughs> peter took jesus aside and began to rebuke him jesus everybody says it's jesus Peter, the person you are taking aside is Jesus. He said, but Jesus said something I was not clear. And I want to tell him not to say it again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for, Satan, it was, for Peter, it was Satan. Don't allow Satan to inspire you. So that you begin to resist righteous people. Is that clear? But where matters are not clear demand answer to logical conclusion don't serve in darkness because your soul is involved so we're going forward when he said so verse 28 then they reviled him and said thou art his disciple but we are moses disciples that's where the matter is we are Moses' disciples. We follow Moses. Do you really follow Moses? For Moses said, The Lord shall give you a prophet like unto me, and him shall thou hear. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall not hear him shall be cut off from among his people. Are you really Moses' disciple? Are you Moses' disciple not doing the word of Moses? So, 
They now say it in verse 29. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not, we know not from whence he is. Wherever he is. God spoke to Moses, but we're not sure God spoke to this person. But remember, it's just the hardening of heart. Because, remember again, John chapter 3. We're coming back here. Remember again, John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. A voice coming from among them. What does it say? There was a man of what? A man of what? Of the Pharisees. Named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him. One, two, go. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Check that sentence. We, Pharisees, know. It's pretense. It's envy. It's envy. Authority should be left to ourselves. Who again is coming up with the voice of authority? Who is that person coming up with the voice of authority? We will not allow him. That's the summary of the matter. As for knowing that God is behind it, they know. It then it shows people who have left God. Otherwise, why are you resisting the ways of your God? Why are you fighting it? You knew God is there and you're fighting? You know that this man is of God and you're fighting? Ah, why do you take that dangerous position? What work are you doing? Are you not doing it for God? You fight God and you say you're working for God? Go back there. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Then, Verse 39. The man answered and said unto them. Hey, you people are funny. <laughs> you know, that's somebody of what the man is saying. This is a funny group. Verse 30. Verse the man answered and said unto them. Why? Hearing is a marvelous thing. That ye know not from whence he is. And yet he had opened mine eyes. Ah, and you say you're religious authority in this place. Verse 31. Now we know the blind man has to preach to these people. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. And if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not hard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. The Lord opening a dumb ass to speak to these mad people. What has seen a blind man who could hear the law? Born blind, what did he know about society as much? But he had the perception of truth. For he has lived in the atmosphere of religion and had gotten some facts. He would preach to these people. He would preach. So, they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins. Not only one sin, in sins. And dost thou teach us and they cast him out of the synagogues. That is what many are fearing about. They will cast me out. They will discipline me. How are you so blind? What is discipline? Can man just condemn what God justifies? Where do you find man's judgment to the point that you disobey God? Hey, this has been the reason why the fathers refused. The parents refused to testify of Jesus. They will cast us out of the synagogue. 
But what is the blessing of being cast out of the synagogue? Let's see whether Jesus asked him to go and plead with them. In, to plead, oh forgive me and receive me back into the synagogue. What did Jesus do when he saw this man? Verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Jesus waited for them to cast him out. Jesus wanted them to cast him out. Because a better life was waiting for him outside. The will of God over that man will be perfected when he is cast out. You sit there and say, I want to do greater works. Which greater works when you sit in darkness, fearing Jesus, fearing man, fearing man, I will not do the will of God. You are sitting down there. You cannot go forward because you fear. They will cast me out of synagogue. The ministry the Lord has for you, you cannot fulfill it. You cannot fulfill it. You won't come. Manage what you're managing there. But this man that was cast of this out of the synagogue, Jesus, and Jesus heard. Who told you he didn't know what is going on? Who told you he didn't know what those people are saying? He knew all, but he kept quiet. He's testing your faith. He's testing your faith. Jesus heard. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him everybody say so can you see Jesus going after him men, when men reject you I will take you up when my father and my mother reject me thou will just take me over you have not given opportunity of, of, to Jesus in your life. You are too fearful to be useful. You are too fearful to be anointed. Which ministry are you expecting greater ministry? When the little you have, you are afraid of it. You want God to put greater grace upon you so that you frustrate it more? Fear coming from even those who are people of God that have limit to what they can do you 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 just fall down and be robbing and be robbing yourself on the grave of mercy what about when it's coming from the enemy perfect enemies that know not no not god fear not god no man what will you do it's just your backbone is not strong jesus is testing your backbone whether it's strong enough for a greater ministry Greater works than this shall they do. So, Jesus heard that he, he had, they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he went about looking for him. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast bought Jesus found him. It means greater blessing was waiting for this man if he could challenge mankind. And oh, thou hast wrestled with God and man has prevailed. Greater blessing is waiting for him. Go and prevail. When God wanted to make David the king, yeah, he sent him to war. At a young age, he went and prevailed. That man shall rule Israel. Don't kill your ministry for any man. Release yourself for Jesus. Don't allow man, the fear of man, to make you kill your ministry. Or even stop you from entering heaven. People who didn't even know anything are the one teaching you, commanding you. Eh, the Bible says in the, the, in the time to come, there will be false teachers. So we are the false teachers? You have not gone to the Bible to check up? The Bible says you should, you should prove all things. Prove all things. And accept that thing which is good. 
Examine it by the scriptures. Reject not prophesying. Proof all things. It's not somebody who just says, hey, run away, run away, run away. No. No. So, and Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and he it is that talketh with thee. What a privilege of a closer walk with Jesus, with God. They have been serving God for some of them for 40 years. They don't know him. It takes this kind of people that God revealed himself to them. Thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, is it made good unto thee? See God now revealing himself. What a comforting revelation after the torture of man. After man rejected him, even the parents, then God takes you over for a close relationship. A close relationship. But do you know, they cast him out because God wanted it so. They would have never cast him out. This fear, your fear is just vanity. No man shall touch, the hair of your head shall not fall to the ground until I allow it. If God wants you to remain in ministry in that place, nothing will happen to you. Go and do it. Nothing will happen. He will sustain you there. Daniel went to the den of the lions and he shut up the mouth of the lions. Because he wanted Daniel to continue in the kingdom of Babylon. The revelations Daniel will reveal had not yet come. He had not finished with Daniel. So don't think that your pastor has any power. Except God wants you to leave the place for your good. This man, it pleased the Lord that he should leave the place. So all, the, so all that was going on, he didn't say anything. He wanted the man to be courageous enough and to finish it. Then he would do a new thing in his life. So that's what you need to know. And then Jesus, verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. This man, this life of this man is wonderful. What, what a glorious life God gave this man. He began like that and ended so wonderfully. But he paid the price. He paid the price. The man is in heaven today because he paid the price. Well, which Christianity are you doing and you're not ready to pay price? You want to use the wisdom of the father of the blind man. The wisdom of the, of the mother of the blind man. He is of age. He's speaking like a lawyer. Yes, the parents spoke like a lawyer. Uh, you... You know, by the law of the by the constitution of the nation, if a person is up to 18 years, he's able to defend himself. And our son is up to 27 years, so he's able to defend himself. And so by the constitution of our country, he can speak for himself. The lawyer has won the case. But the heart is fearful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then Jesus now said in verse 39, Jesus and Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the world, that they which see, or that, that they which see not might see, and they that and, and that they which see might be made blind. Are you clear? The Lord had ordained things to be like that. Therefore, if you see any people stumbling, that's how it is. Pray for them. Don't fear. Pray for them. Stand firm for Jesus. Pray for those who don't see. Because some of these people that are stumbling like that, they are actually children of God. Some of these people that you see stumbling like this 
I want to let you know that they are actually children of God that are sincere but they are blind. They are sincere. Look at it in Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 are you there Isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 that's why when you see a servant of God stumble like this pray for him pray for Satan respects no man Pray that the grace of God may overtake them. Verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. They knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them pray for them this divine promise they are blind they, they, they felt they have known all ways but they have really not known a way they are blind to that way they are blind the prophets of all did not know so, did not know about the church their prophecy was on israel and uh, messiah coming in and then the uh, at the, the tribulation and then the second coming of christ but concerning the church they were blind the lord kept it from them for the secret thing belongs unto the lord they are blind so again I will lead them in paths that they have not known. It is a path, divine path, but they don't know it. It is a path God has chosen in this end time, but they are not aware. They are not aware. They don't know it. They are blind towards this path. They are blind towards this way. I'm talking about some sincere people who don't know. Not the type, not the Pharisaic type. I will tell you about the Pharisaic type. But I'm talking about sincere people now. Who don't know. He said, I will make darkness light before them. They want to think towards the thing. Their mind is dark. They cannot bring out anything from it. They say, hey, I, I, have, I have searched through the scripture. They are following, they are quoting some scriptures that have no meaning. Why? They, it is dark to them. Matter is dark. Their minds are dark towards it. That's to help them humble them. Don't ever boast that you have known all things. Knowledge is in the hand of the Lord. He gives it. So, and again, he said, I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. They are thinking that those things are crooked. How will you ever say somebody will die and come back? This is a crooked thing. How will you ever? It looks crooked to them. Pray that I should make it straight. They will see it as a, ah, this is a straight course, actually. I didn't know. I thought it was crooked. Pray for them. That they will see it. Then the Lord is describing which is this blind people. Who are these people? The Lord says they are blind. Verse 19. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Who is blind but my servant? Or Dave as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Can you now see? Can you now see? 
Who told you that there is a servant of God that has known everything? Then he is God. Then he has become God. Because it's only God that has known everything. Let every servant of God be humble. Let him that thinketh he knows know that he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. He's my servant. In fact, he's perfect. You won't see him committing other sins. Mm. But he's blind. It's my servant that I send. I'm using him, but he's blind. Pray that I will open his eyes. I'm talking about my servant, the Lord's servant. The Pharisees were not his servants. Were they his servants? I'm talking about some sincere servant that are not aware. You pray for them. Because they are not aware. That's why they are fighting. That's why they are taking this step they are taking. They are not aware. But as concerning Pharisaic blindness, hey, in John chapter 9, John chapter 9, verse 40 and 41. John chapter 9, verse 40 and 41. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, yes, we see, therefore, your sin remained. Your sin remained. Actually, you are blind, but then you say you see. You are not owning up to your blindness. You are saying you see. You are boasting that you know the scripture. Sin is upon you. Because you are resisting the ways of God. You boast. You are showing your boss, then you are sinning. You are sinning. You are not humble. You are not praying, asking questions. You are rather boasting that wouldn't wish knowledge. When did the Spirit of God left me and leave me and come to you, Micaiah? Then sin is in your life. Sin is in your life. Because if you had admitted to your blindness, there would have been mercy. But you boast that you see, and yet you are blind. We are grateful. Have you learned something today? Yes, are you happy? Yes, it's to help you. So that they don't use your hand and thrust into your eye and you start crying. No. It's baboon. They say if you want to kill a baboon, Take a knife and begin to do as if you are, you are tearing your flesh. Chick, I mean, turn the knife at your stomach and then pull it, pull it down this way. Then throw the knife to the baboon. He will get the knife and thrust it into his stomach and tear it down and fall down dead. Don't allow yourself to be treated like that, that you kill yourself. Because somebody else did some drama for you and you just followed. Be a real man. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-7000. Zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement 
at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe Yeah.
I believe, I believe you. 